Madame, Mesdames, Messieurs, deux travaux ont été soumis pour le prix francophone GSK. Et à l'unanimité, le jury a retenu le travail soumis par Pierre Meesters, qui a situé Another Parenting for Immunity and Vaccine Development Against Group A Streptococcus, qui a été considéré comme recevable, <coughs> quoique le développement du vaccin ne soit encore qu'en préparation. Le docteur Pierre Smirsis est né en 1975. Il a été reconnu pédiatre à l'Université libre de Bruxelles en 2005. Durant sa formation, il s'est particulièrement distingué par ses qualités cliniques et sa curiosité scientifique. Il s'est rapidement intéressé aux maladies infectieuses pédiatriques. Et suite à un stage à l'hôpital universitaire de Brasilia, il a effectué une étude comparative des souches de streptocoque entre les enfants brésiliens et belges. À partir de 2004, il a travaillé dans le laboratoire de génétique de l'IFB à Gosserie sous la direction du professeur Laurence Van Meldren en s'investissant dans la recherche sur les infections à streptocoque. Il a ensuite fait un postdoc à Brisbane en Australie avec une bourse du FNRS dans le laboratoire de pathogenèse bactérienne du professeur Sri Prakash. Depuis 2011, il travaille dans le laboratoire de microbiologie du Murdoch Children's Research Institute à Melbourne, cette fois, et son projet de revenir à Bruxelles en 2014 pour y renforcer la recherche bactériologique dans le réseau IRIS. L'originalité de la démarche scientifique du Dr. Smithers réside dans l'approche transversionnelle, multicentrique des travaux en cours. À partir d'une question de recherche scientifique fondamentale visant à mieux comprendre la diversité génétique d'une protéine, il a développé une nouvelle classification des souches de streptocoque qui a permis d'analyser et de comprendre un phénomène de protection croisé entre les streptocoques. Ces résultats ont une grande importance pour le développement d'un vaccin efficace contre cette bactérie qui fait des ravages notamment et particulièrement dans les pays en développement. Pierre Fismers a certainement été sensibilisé au problème de santé de ces pays en travaillant comme médecin de première ligne dans une zone reculée du Pérou, à peine obtenu son diplôme de médecin. Il convient de souligner que ces résultats ont été obtenus grâce à un large consortium international qui a su rassembler autour de son projet, ce qui illustre sa reconnaissance internationale et sa capacité à développer des collaborations fructueuses avec ses pairs. Les travaux de recherche de Dr. Pierre Smithers ont déjà donné lieu à de nombreuses publications dans des journaux scientifiques de haut niveau. Le jury du prix GSK a donc reconnu la valeur de ces travaux de ce jeune chercheur dans la droite ligne des objectifs du prix. Madame, Messieurs les Présidents, Messieurs les secrétaires perpétuels, chers collègues, mesdames et messieurs, recevoir ce prix GSK Vaccine est une grande joie et est également accompagné d'une certaine émotion. La vie scientifique se nourrit d'enthousiasme et d'un réel plaisir à explorer l'inconnu. Cependant, le métier est également parsemé de moments de déception lorsque la réalité nous rappelle avec force les limites de cet exercice. Je voudrais profiter de ce moment pour remercier tout d'abord les membres du jury ainsi que toutes les personnes qui ont contribué à ce travail. Marielst, Willi Gseer Pachtrug, Professeur Klaus Pachert, von der Universität von Kent, dankbar sein für sein besondere Beitrag tot und beter begrip von der Lucht wegen Infektion und tot der Manier, waarop wij hier tegen kunnen strijden. The research project I will briefly present today results from an international collaboration between several researchers and clinicians. I therefore have the greatest pleasure to tell you this scientific story by presenting some of the key collaborators involved in this project. This project started 10 years ago in Children Hospital Queen Fabiola in Brussels. Thanks to the support of Professor Philippe Lepage, who is the head of the pediatric department, Professor Georges Casimir, the medical director of the Children Hospital, and Professor André Kahn, who helped to initiate this project, we started to investigate a bacterium called Streptococcus pyogenes. 
This bacterium is responsible for the very common infection called pharyngitis that you all know about. This bacterium is also responsible for more dramatic infections that can kill a child in only a few hours. And unfortunately, we see those patients in the intensive care unit from the children's hospital on a regular basis. What we do not see in Belgium, but is very frequent in the low-income regions of the world, such as South America, Africa, and Southeast Asia, is rheumatic fever, also due to the same bacterium. Globally, this bacterium kills half a million people each year. And despite intensive research during the seven last decades, there is still no vaccine available to prevent these infections. In 2003 and 2004, my family and I lived in the beautiful city of Brasilia, in Brazil. Professor Dioclesio Campos Jr. had a very significant contribution in helping to collect bacterial strains in order to compare them with the Belgian strains. In Belgium, we found only a limited number of bacterial strains. Each color in this pie represents a different strain of the bacterium. And the current knowledge in immunology says that when you get protected against one color, <coughs> the, the orange, for example, it does not protect you against the others. However, as the number of colors in this pie is small, a vaccine, an efficient vaccine, is possible in Belgium. And this vaccine was actually under clinical development at that time. In Brazil, we found a much higher number of colors. Actually, this pie looks like the colors you can see in a Brazilian carnival. Unfortunately, it's not possible to develop a vaccine that would protect against that many colors. At the same time, similar results were published in India, in Ethiopia, and in Fiji. As a consequence, the development of the vaccine was stopped in 2007 because it would have been inefficient in the countries that most needed. From 2005 to 2008, I had a chance to work in the Laboratoire de Génétique et Physiologie Bactérienne, headed by Professor Laurence van Melderen. During these years, we've been focusing on understanding better a surface protein of this bacterium. The bacterium is in yellow, and if you look closer, you have here four bacteria in yellow and an immune human cell that basically tries to kill the bacterium. And the surface of the protein, uh, the surface of the bacterium looks like hairs, and these hairs are actually a protein called the M protein. And we've been focusing on this protein because it really represents the interface between the bacteria and your immune system. There is one brilliant question at the starting point of this whole project, and this question is not mine, but belongs to Professor Laurent van Melderen. The results I previously published, I previously showed, sorry, were obtained by analyzing a small portion of the protein, because this is how we usually do so. However, we knew at that time that the green, the yellow, the orange portion of the protein were very important as well for bacterial virulence. So, our question was, what could we understand, what could we learn by analyzing the whole protein, the protein as a whole, and not only the portion everybody is looking at? When starting to answer that question, we found that it did not change our understanding of the Belgian bacteria. The colors were still quite different. On the contrary, when analyzing the Brazilian bacteria, the many colors that I call the Brazilian carnival were transformed into shades of only a limited number of colors. So this is obviously a rather bad news for a carnival but it's an excellent news for our vaccine developers because suggesting that the immunity against, for example, a dark blue might protect you against the other shades of blue. This very exciting result was in strong contradiction with the accepted theory, but suggested 
that a different classification was possible for this bacterium. And most importantly, it suggests that an efficient vaccine might still be possible in Brazil. In 2009, we lived in Brisbane, in Australia, working with Therese Vu, Kalabash Riprakash, and David McMillan. We wanted to test the ID with a large collection of strains. We therefore invited many researchers to join the study group, and thanks to them, we could analyze more than a thousand of strains coming from 31 different countries. Pierre Alexandre Dres from Orlag in Belgium did a very great job in obtaining the sequencing data across this collection. I also would like to thank the SNRS for having filmed this project based on a good idea but without that much preliminary data. In most of the countries, the funding agencies ask for a project to be nearly finished before funding it. <laughs> the FNRS slogan, La Liberté de Chercher, played a central role in the whole project and I'm very proud of my country for that. From 2010 to 2012, we've been using a multidisciplinary approach including epidemiology, bioinformatics, protein modeling and experimental validation to set up and validate a new classification for this bacterium. Julien Bouglielmini from the Institut Pasteur in Paris had a very significant contribution to the bioinformatic part of this project, while Martina Sanderson-Smith from Sydney undertook the binding assay for the validation. This new classification really changed our understanding about how this bacterium can infect us. And has received a very warm welcome from our international colleagues. The Worldwide Reference Laboratory at CDC in Atlanta has endorsed this new classification and proposed to host it on the CDC website. In October 2011, Professor Jim Dale from Tennessee in the US published a paper about a new vaccine formulation that, surprisingly, induced in rabbit protection against different strains of the bacterium, the different colors I previously mentioned. We therefore contacted him, proposing this new classification as a way to understand this phenomenon of cross-protection and as a framework to develop and design a new formulation of the vaccine. Collaboration has been established and the shared data suggests that it should be possible to develop a single vaccine antigen that would offer very high protection rates across the different regions of the world. Since November 2011, we have the pleasure to live in Melbourne, Australia, and I am working in the Murdoch Children Research Institute, as you can see here, and after the very bad spring that you have had in Belgium, I probably need to apologize to show the beautiful beach of Brighton <laughs> located very close to the Institute. In Melbourne, I have the great pleasure to work with Dr. Andrew Steele, who is a leader in Streptococcus vaccine development and who has obtained a very broad biobank of children from Fiji infected by Streptococcus biogenes. We are currently validating our vaccine strategy by testing it in both human sera and mice, and hopefully we will be able to present this data in the near future. Before to conclude, I just would like to simply thank my wonderful wife and my great kids for all what they achieved during these years. I did not have a chance to present all the people involved in this project, but I would like to sincerely thank them all. Thank you very much for your attention.